Hello again. We're back to tangling with kinematics questions and seeing if we can get comfortable with them. And today we're talking about trains. The TGV can get to a maximum speed of 575 kilometers per hour, starting at rest. When they say start at rest, they mean that initially you weren't moving at all. So, starting at rest means your initial velocity was zilch, and your final velocity. Well, they give it as kilometers per hour, which is not... Oh, or is it? I was about to say that we don't want our velocity in kilometers per hour because then our accelerations would come out in kilometers per hour squared, but apparently that's exactly what they want, so... Okay. I guess we can use that. Almost always we would convert this into meters per second by dividing by 3.6, but... Not today. Today we're using weird units because it's a multiple choice question and we're kind of stuck. So we have initial velocity, we have final velocity, and they say that as the train gets up to its full speed, it covers a distance of 8 kilometers. So now we have that. And they're asking for the acceleration. Well, wonderful news, there's a single formula that ties together every single one of these things, and it is... Vf squared equals Vi squared plus 2ad. We know the final velocity, it's 575, initial was 0, distance is 8 clicks, and from that we'll get an acceleration, no problem. There are harder ways where we could find the acceleration, the time required to get to top speed, and then figure out acceleration from there, but this fits so well that you'd be crazy to use anything else. So, Vf is 575 squared equals 0 squared, don't really need to write that, plus 2 times an a I don't know times a distance of 8. Uh, I suppose I was going to write 575 squared, but I guess at some point I have to do that, so let's make it happen. Uh, turn on phone, get to home screen, start calculator app. Sorry, my phone's a bit of a clunker, so that doesn't go very fast. 575 squared is 330,625. 30, zero squared is zero, so we can ignore that. Two times eight is 16, so we get that big number equals 16a. Divide both sides by 16. And we get the acceleration is 20,664. Point zero. Oh, sorry, kilometers per hour squared. My bad. This is a weird acceleration unit that I've almost, that I've probably never used before in my life, so not totally comfortable with it, but 20,664, and while that is not in our list of answers, there is this version in scientific notation. If you're turning this into scientific, you think, Initially, your decimal was there, but in scientific notation, the decimal is supposed to be right after the first digit, which would mean moving one, two, three, four steps to the left. That gives us 2.0664 times 10 to the, it was four steps, so fourth power kilometers per hour squared. Not too bad. What else have we got here? Six millimeter long frog hoppers are some kind of bug? I'm not sure what a frog hopper is. I'll have to look after we get through this, but I'm guessing we can get through the physics while <coughs> remaining ignorant of the bi biology. The University of Cambridge reported that a 6 millimeter long frog hopper, so a little tiny critter, can leap 70 centimeters up. And they say that's as difficult as a person jumping 210 meters, so that is pretty impressive. So we're talking about height at the top here of 70 centimeters. I'm just going to scoot that into meters because that's our usual unit, the previous problem notwithstanding. And what else do we know? We know we started down here at the ground. 
as long as we're on Earth, we know that our acceleration, vertically speaking, is minus 9.81 meters per second squared. And they're asking about the initial jump velocity. So when you launch yourself off the ground, you have an initial velocity of something, and then it's going to go lower, 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 very low, zero, and that's when you get to the top. So another thing we know about this top point is that the velocity there is zero. That's the point where you stop for just an instant and then you start falling back down. So we need to find our VI and we know VF and we know acceleration and we know distance. Huh. Can you think of a formula we used in the last few minutes that... This is a really good one as you're probably noticing. V final would be zero, V initial is what we're solving for, acceleration is minus 9.81 and our distance is the point 70 meters. That should be enough to do this. Zero squared equals, I don't know, VI. Two, remember your acceleration is negative. Terrible things will happen if you forget. And the distance is 70 centimeters, which we're calling 0 0.70 meters. So, zero equals vi squared uh, two times nine point eight one times point seven is thirteen point seven three four and okay take the thirteen to the other side and we get vi squared is thirteen point seven three four and square root that, we get 3.71. Actually, our givens only have two significant digits, so I think we have to hack this off at 3.7 meters per second. Fair enough. So, the VF squared formula comes through again. That went fairly fast. Let's see if we can get another one or two off here. Well, standing on the ground, a baseball player throws a ball straight up at a speed of 10 meters per second, and then a second one. Okay, so two completely separate objects here. One starts off at 10 meters per second, and will fly up in the air for a certain distance, and then fall back down. And they're talking about how high they rise, meaning they want to know this maximum height here. And we know that when you're at the very top of a trajectory like that, your velocity is zero. And every baseball player we have is currently on Earth, so the acceleration should be minus 9.81 meters per second squared. Now, at the same time, they throw another ball, but not as hard a ball whose initial velocity is only 5 meters per second. Acceleration will be the same amount, and it too will rise until it gets to 0 meters per second, and then it'll start to fall back down. So we want to know the heights of these two balls, and then we're going to compare them. They want to say, how high did the first ball go compared to the second one? So we need to get a height here, meaning a distance, and a height for this one. So probably the same calculation twice. Uh... I didn't leave myself a ton of space, so I'm going to have to wedge this in a bit, sorry. If we want distance, oh look. This is definitely becoming our how high did something go when you threw it formula. And if we use it in this first case, we get 0 squared equals 10 squared plus 2 a is minus 9.81, and we're solving for d this time. Uh, 0 squared is 0. 10 squared is 100. 2 times 9.81 is 19.62d. Take this to the other side so it becomes positive, and you get 19.62d equals 10. And if we want d by itself, we divide 10 by 19.62, or we divide both sides by 19.62, I should say. And we get 10 divided by 
Oh, I'm sorry. I, I just got 0.5 of a meter and thought that's crazy. That ball should be going much higher. This 10 squared is 100. I wrote 10 squared and then I just forgot to do the squaring part, so let's try that again. This is 100. Now it's 19.62. D equals 100. Now we divide both sides by 19.62 and we get 100 divided by 19.62 comes out to 5 point, I get 5.0968, but when we round that to two digits, we get 5.10. 5 point 10 meters is the height for the first ball. Now we get to do that again. Vf squared equals Vi squared plus 2ad. Um, some people might say, like, if you threw this ball at half the speed, it should go, it should rise to half the height, just common sense. Let's see if that holds up. We notice this height is, this velocity is exactly half the one on the left, but what does that get us? Vf squared is still zero. Our initial this time is five squared plus two. A is 9.81, as long as we're on Earth, D. 5 squared is 25, minus 19.62d. Take the 19.62 to the other side. And if we want to get d alone, right now it's multiplied by 19.62, so we divide both sides by 19.62. I haven't been showing this every time, but in case it's been a while, you do this, these 19.62s cancel out, and we get D equals 25 divided by 19.62 is 1.27. Okay, so those are the two heights. And they want to know how big, how high is the first distance compared to the second distance. If you want to compare two of these, what we usually do is divide them. If you want to know how many times bigger one is, take the big one divided by the smaller one and see what you get. So, for a comparison, if you do 5.10 divided by 1.27, 1 1.27, what you get is 4.02, meaning the bigger distance is about four times greater than the smaller one four times greater. The other way you can compare two numbers is you can subtract them. You can do 5.10 minus 1.27 and find that these are, what, 3.83, that this is 3.83 meters higher. That's the, what we call the absolute difference, and that's not really what they're talking about here. If they want to say how many times bigger is some one thing than another, dividing them is how you get that. Do this division in the number that you'll get is the big one is four times as big as the smaller one. Or if you did it the other way, if you were talking about the second ball compared to the first ball, you would do 1.27 divided by 5.10 and that would come out to about 0.25 which would tell you the smaller height is about 0.25 or one quarter as big as the larger one. Either one of those works, but if they say the first ball compared to the second one, to us that means first one divided by the second one. And that tells us the second ball, or the first ball, sorry, rose four times as high. So the common sense thing didn't really work out. If you throw a ball twice as hard, it doesn't go twice as high, it goes four times as high. 